Hi, and welcome to this Fornav Coffee Break. My name is René Brummel. I'm a product specialist at Fornav, and I will be your presenter today. As this coffee break is live, you can ask your questions via the GoToWebinar question window. We will answer them at the end of the coffee break. Today, we're going to add lot and serial numbers to your Business Central reports, the easy way. We have discussed adding lot and serial numbers on documents before. The hard part on lot and serial numbers, however, is that they are stored in two separate tables, the reservation entries for unposted documents and item ledger entries for posted documents. With Fornav, we now have an easy way to add these item tracking lines. For any of the supported tables, all you need to do is add a temporary table. Fornav will then do the heavy lifting for you. Let's go and have a look. To demonstrate adding item tracking, I'm going to use these steps. Prerequisites, what do I need to get going? In step two, I will add the item tracking table to my template. In step three, I will add the item tracking table to my order. In step four, I will add the item tracking table to my shipment. Let's start with the first step. Today, I will work in a Business Central on-premise server with the Business Central 2022 Wave 2 release. I've installed the Universal Code version of the 4NAV Customizable Report Pack and I've executed the step-by-step -step wizard from the assisted setup to get started. Of course, everything I do today is also available on the Business Central SaaS environment. I also have the 4NAV Designer installed on my PC. The 4NAV Designer can be downloaded from the 4NAV website. The functions to add item tracking are available in 4NAV version 7 or above. The first thing we have to do to add item tracking, uh, sorry, the first thing we will do is add item tracking to the sales template. And once we have it there, we can in easily inherit it on other documents. So let's move away from all this boring PowerPoint stuff. Let's uh, open Business Central. And in Business Central, we will find our four enough reports and we will find the sales template. And whilst that is loading, we'll just have a quick look inside Business Central at some orders or an order that I've prepared before. Um, I've created a simple order with two new items, uh, a Golga Frinken Arc and some space fuel, which I am selling. And if I look at my line and related information and item tracking lines, you will notice that for the space fuel, I'm selling 5,000 liters and 2,000 liters I have already shipped and invoiced and 3,000 liters are still uh, still left to, uh, to ship and invoice. The same with the, uh, uh, with the ARCs. If I go to my related information and item tracking lines, you will notice that two of these have already been shipped and invoiced and two of these uh, still need to be uh, still need to be shipped and invoiced. That means that in the item tracking, and if you look at the underlying tables, that the shipped and invoiced lines uh, are now no longer reservation entries, but they are uh, item uh, item ledger entries. So uh, it, just to show you the uh, the complexity of the data set that we're working with. So what we want to do is display the uh, item tracking lines on the invoice, on the shipment, and on the sales order. Like I said, we will start with the sales template, which is based on the on the sales order table. Uh, sorry, on the sales sales invoice table. Um, so what we want to do is we want to display the item tracking lines. To do so, I will simply drag a data item on top of my report, and in this data item, I will find my tracking specification table, which is table 336, just a box standard business central table. I will hit OK. That will add the tracking specification data item in my report. And if I scroll down on my data item, you will find a temporary and an auto-populate uh, uh, property. And if I switch the temporary to true, the auto-populate will also switch to true, which means that 4NAV will now try to automatically populate the tracking specification table, which is great. Then, of course, we want to show some data on this data item so I'm going to add a body 
which I will call tracking body. Since we will inherit all this stuff from a template report, it makes sense to keep your sections named properly so you know what's what when you come to inherit it. Uh, choosing between body 1, body 2 and body 3 is a bit tricky. Um, so a, uh, a recognizable name is uh, recommended. Uh, I'll quickly add a table right here. And in this table, I'm going to add the data from the tracking specification line. And what I'm going to do, since I can have either an item number or a lot number, is I'm going to use the cur report join strings function. And a join strings will string uh, multiple, uh, multiple strings together as long as they have a value. So what I'm saying here, if tracking specification uh, field extensions lot number has a value, I'm going to display that. And if tracking specification field number serial number is has a value, I'm going to display that. And I separate them with a the backslash n, which is JavaScript for a new line. So nothing fancy there. Uh, I will just display lot number if I have a lot number and serial number if I have a serial number. Then for the quantity, I'm going to grab the quantity base from my tracking specification and for the unit of measure there's no unit of measure in the item tracking so I'm simply going to grab the unit of measure from the sales line and there we go and that's pretty much all we need to do I can preview my report and of course we need to preview it with the invoice that has the actual item tracking on it. And you will notice that on my invoice I now have two lines, my Golga Frinken arc, uh, of which I have invoiced two, which we noticed, and we have serial number B2497 and B5743. Uh, both of these have one piece, and for space fuel type B, uh, I have a lot number, uh, and of that lot number I've sold 2000 liters. Let's go back to the For Now Designer. Since I want to inherit from this template, I'm going to need to save and activate, which means I'm ready for step two. So now we've added the tracking specification to the template. It is pretty easy to add it to other reports as well. So let's start with the order. Back to Business Central. So we'll find the order and everything in here is still box standard so let's create a new layout and on this layout uh, I need to do some of the things the same as I did before so I need to grab a data item which is going to be the tracking specification which I will set to temporary and auto populate to true I will insert a new body section which I will call tracking body and this tracking body I will inherit from my template so I'll link this to my sales template and if you are watching this from the United States which uh, at the time of recording I doubt but at some point somebody will watch it from the United States we have multiple sales templates inside Fornav we have the sales template sales tax uh, where is it? Here, it? here it is. The sales template sales tax is used for North American reports and the sales template is used for the VAT reports we use in Europe and other parts of the world. So that inherits the, uh, the master report. Then I need to choose my the section which I want to inherit. And this is where you can see that naming sections actually makes a lot of sense. So that's pretty much it. Preview my report again for order 1002. And there we go. You will notice that on this order we uh, sell four arcs with individual serial numbers and we sell 5000 liters of space fuel in three separate batches with three separate lot numbers. Finally, we are going to add the tracking specification to the shipment as well. And by now, this 
may get a little bit boring uh, because of course first thing I need to do is add my tracking specification data item I don't think the power of a message is in the, re is in the repeating so there's no point in repeating this stuff add my data item set temporary true and set auto populate true and you will notice that auto populate automatically sets uh, will be set to true uh, because i am designing a custom layout in here of course i need to insert a body which will be tracking body and in this case you will notice that the actual lines are not inherited from the template report and that's because, of course, on the shipment we have no need of showing, uh, showing amounts and prices and that sort of stuff. So what I'm going to do here is not inherit from my template. But I'm just going to copy my body stuff in here. And just move this stuff around so it actually looks nice on this specific report. There we go. And when we're done, we will preview. And there we have the shipment with the serial numbers and the lot numbers. So let's recap what we just did. The first thing we did was to add the tracking specification data item to the template report. By setting the temporary and auto-populate properties to true, Fornaf will get the item tracking data automatically. After that, all we needed to do was add a body section with the data we wanted to display. Finally, we added the tracking specification data item to other sales reports and set these to inherit the body for, it, for the template or, uh, of course, we can just create a new body per, uh, for, the, for the shipment. You can find more information about item tracking in the Fornav knowledge base. Uh, the article describes which tables and which fields are mapped to the te temporary tracking specification table. Like I said, uh, the tracking specification table is mapped to either the, uh, the reservation entries or the item ledger entries. Uh, so uh, in this knowledge base article, we describe which field is mapped to where. Thank you for listening to me so far. I can see we have no questions at this moment. If you do still do have any questions, just type them into the GoToMeeting question box and I can answer them before the end of the webinar. Um, for now, let me wrap up. If you want to know more about Fornav or if you want to download the Fornav Designer and Converter, please visit our website. If you want to install Fornav in Business Central Cloud, please visit the Microsoft App Source. You can watch more videos about Fornav on our YouTube channel. If you have any questions about Fornav, please email them to support at fornav.com. I get one question. Is this recorded? Yes, this uh, coffee break has been recorded and it will be made available on the uh, Fornav Coffee Breaks website um, at some point later this week. And for a full list of upcoming and recorded coffee breaks, you can visit uh, fornav.com slash coffee break. With that, I can't see any more questions come popping up, so I will thank you very much for listening, and I will speak to you in the next coffee break. Goodbye.